what has been proven again and again is that a five cent aspirin is not very effective curing your headache, but a 50 cent aspirin is. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by Per Shawforce, who is the founder of Shawforce and Partners Inc., but more commonly known as the Price Whisperer. And he will explain where he got that moniker from in a moment. Thank you so much for joining us. Per is actually over in, in California, is that right? Yes, I'm in, uh, I'm in Los Angeles and it looks like we... Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, but it actually looks like we may get a little bit of rain which is the first rain we've had since february i think wow yeah so um, it's actually pretty dry over there then it is pretty dry and and uh, uh and and uh, you know water is running low so we're not yeah. allowed to um uh to water our yards anymore and stuff like that so wow it reminds well, me of being back in australia we had similar kind of challenges over there regularly in australia yeah, that's right. That's right. And um, so, so anyway, everything is dying. And um, but but you know, and it's and and it's hot. I mean, the hottest little corner in um, in LA, and and this week we've had up to about forty four degrees. Wow. Yeah. So today's been only forty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I have to say I'm not envious because I don't like really hot heat, but it, it sounds like at least it's um yeah it, it's it's not cold it's not cold and it's not wet like no, we are over here so no. that's good <laughs> yeah okay no, so no. um we've just had a bit of a chat before we came on this podcast and you've obviously got a very fascinating story i wonder if you might start to share some of that with us and also tell us you know what you're most proud of professionally and personally in your life so far yeah the the um i actually have a i mean my i have a background of of um first an engineering background and then an mba but the the uh, my entrepreneurial um, journey, if you want, uh, want to call it that, started really, uh, I'm Swedish from start, and um, I had the opportunity to, <laughs> I worked for this company, and the owner of the company, um, and I was on the engineering side, and he said, <clears throat> um, you need to go into sales. And he's told me that for a couple of years, and I said, no, I can't do sales. Eventually, though, he convinced me. So um, we set up a company in Switzerland, uh, in, in Zurich. And, and um, I, I had the, um, I was scared out of my wits, right? Uh, because um, I've never established a company before. I've never been a CEO before. I've never developed a European-wide uh, uh, distribution business. And I didn't know the language. <laughs> just a few challenges then <laughs> so so one had to be a quick learner for sure that's uh and you know and that was was a lot of lot of work of course and um as it always is but but it was very successful um and um, however after about five years when we i think we were up to about seven eight million in revenue so pretty small but um, we, um, I was then bought over actually by my main competitor, which was a Japanese company. And uh, I became CEO of their uh, subsidiary out of London uh, to handle the, um, the European market. And, and over, th over a three year period, I quadrupled sales. Wow. So um, that was, and I was, <laughs> it was sort of funny. I, um, I was known in the company as as the hardest worker in, in when you have a Japanese company, you know, wow. which wasn't really true because um, these these folks from from Japan they had you know they have a to do list for today you know with fifty items you know, and they they didn't stop until they done all the fifty items and I did the the six items that made any difference you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> but. Um, but but that was fun, you know, and, and also to to get an insight into um, the inside of a Japanese company, you know. Mm. Um, and um, we um, we always took our our best distributors to to Japan and uh, travel around them in Japan, and so we saw it really from the inside, you know. Okay. Um, but then eventually, I I um, was recruited to establish a division of a fairly large company, uh, a fairly large public company here in in the U.S which I did. And uh, um, 
and and that was also very scary you know to suddenly be um on on the management team of a again a, a you know a, a half billion dollar company in, and that is public you know and, yeah. and so forth um but um but the whole thing we it went well you know um i took that division to about 72 million in two years so um and 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 the um the um, uh, I was very successful. Um, the company though died around me, you know. <laughs> Long story short, um, and and uh, I actually negotiated uh, to sell our division to Philips in Holland, and um, and the all everything was done. We just needed the uh, the signature of of Philips CEO, and then he got fired. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Boy, okay. Can, may I ask what happened then? Well, what happens then? The the I mean, we were part of this dying company. It doesn't matter that I had uh, lots of lots of business, and and because uh, the um, um, the owners of the company um, or the the I shouldn't say the owners of the company because it was public, but the uh, the major investor says that you well, let's just shut it down. You know, there's no future here. That's sad. Yep. Okay, so where to from there then? Well, then I had another um, four CEO positions. But the, the point is that in, in all of these instances, we did experiments with pricing mm. only because it was an interest area for me. And um, the, the, some of those experiments were very successful, meaning that next quarter revenues are up 25% or so. And um, uh, many were complete duds. And what I had learned in business school and could read about pricing was so theoretical and so academic that it was really useless as an information source to find out why some of those experiments worked and others didn't. So, so 15 years ago, I decided I was too old and too uh, opinionated to, to be a hired gun. And um, so I set up my own shop and, um, and, and, and said to myself that I wanted to develop a process that makes every pricing experiment a success. And, uh, and that process uh, is, is the process we, we still use. We have refined it, obviously, uh, over time. Uh, we developed our own AI software that supports the, the, the process. And, um, and it's, it's, it's all about understanding um, what a market is willing to pay for a product or a service, mm -hmm. right? And we... We define uh, find a way where that could be measured with great accuracy, and and from that we can predict sales volume and revenue and profits at different price levels, right? Um, and and it is it's not only that um, because then we um, we segment it so we can tell our clients this is the customer segment or persona uh, or uh, that leads to the highest sales volume and revenue. Mm. We do the same with product or service features and benefits. We can say, use these in your um, messaging and, and, and in your marketing because they drive the highest sales volume at higher prices. Mm. Um, the, um, and the, the, um, uh, we do the same with marketing. So we tell our clients, Use these marketing messages in these channels because it's going to drive the highest sales and revenue. Same with sales. Use these sales methodologies and these channels because it's going to light, drive the highest revenue. And finally, of course, uh, we say we can define a pricing strategy that minimizes friction and maximizes uh, sales volume and revenue. Mm, wow. So yeah. um, it's a process that you've developed, uh, and obviously mm -hmm. you've been doing this for quite some time now. Um, yeah. What do you see the common sort of mistakes people make around pricing? Well, um, the first one is really not to realize that pricing is, is, is a profit driver. Mm -hmm. and, and almost all companies we work with um, are underpriced, right? Mm -hmm. And, and um, um, just to give some recent examples of underpriced companies, um, we uh, and this is using this um, uh, methodology of, of of measuring willingness to pay and predict sales volume and so forth. 
Uh, one company we took from an annual revenue of about 200 million to 250 million in three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Yep. Um, uh, another one, a small company we took from about 15 to um, 15 to uh, uh, 35 million in that took six weeks, roughly. It was more complicated to do the measurement. So, so, so why do you think people undervalue their product or service? Um, well, they, 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 well, one thing is that in business school, um, you are being taught these demand curves that tells you that the lower the price, the higher the sales volume. Mm -hmm. And most companies are more interested in sales volume than revenue and profits. And that is a mistake because um, if you instead focus on profits, you get more resource to develop new products, to do more marketing, to do more sales development, to hire the best people and so forth. Mm -hmm. So a focus on profitability and a focus on putting um, pricing um, in, in, as a centerpiece of, of your business strategy makes a huge difference. Yeah. I uh, you mentioned my book here, and I um, the the you know I reached out to some prior customers. And I sent them a review copy and and asked them, can you can you say something nice, you know? And one company, um, Jim Minaric, came back and he said, "Well, Pear, uh, you helped us grow from a hundred million to over a billion. Thank you very much." by putting pricing in as the centerpiece of the business strategy yeah and i think what you're saying is absolutely right is you know once you get if you focus not on the top lines of revenue but on the profitability it enables you to create it's a self-fulfilling prophecy right you're creating a better business you're creating better um everything gets better because of that and therefore you can continue to oh, absolutely. be sustainable yeah yeah, yeah. And, and other, other mistakes people do is, you know, they look at their cost and then they put some margin on and there's typically in different industries, there are different rules of thumb, right? Yeah. Um, some companies try to look at a competitor that um, could work if the competitor has, has pricing in public, but if it doesn't, it's almost impossible to find what they're charging. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, if you, that is typically the first step into the commoditization death spiral. Yes. So, <laughs> so um, yes, and which you want to avoid. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been interesting because when I work with businesses, they're often concerned that if they do put their prices up, that they will lose customers. And mm -hmm. there is a mathematical equation that sort of says, hey, sometimes putting your prices up, you lose, even with losing customers, you still end up being a whole lot better off long term, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that absolutely, that's our business. And, and because the price, um, if, you, if you price yourself too low, um, you get, um, you know, people look at the price and say, this is so cheap, it can't be any good. Hmm. And I mean, we've all been there, you know, we hold yeah. something in our hands and we say, I kind of want to buy this, but this is so low that this is, the price is so low that I'm, I'm going to pass. This can't be any good, yeah. right? We do it when we buy cars. We do it when we buy. It's, it's all about. It's all branding, really, isn't it? At the end of the day, you if it is too cheap, you think, well, it cannot be a good quality. Um, it yeah, can't correct. be one that people. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so when you start working with a business, um, where do you start? Oh, um, it's always to 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 understand understand the business, um, mm -hmm. and and um, like like in, but but it's. <clears throat> Since what we do is all external to the business, we need to understand how they see their market, how they see their buyers and, and their product and services. We do not work with, with sort of internal processes and stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, the, the, and that's why we have like I, this, you know, like I mentioned, we can kind of turn around the company on, in three weeks, mm -hmm. right? Um, because nothing changes in the company. You just adjust the prices. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now, you're making it sound all very, very simple, but there's obviously a little bit more behind it. Tell me a bit about, uh, can you give one of your um, examples of the business that you've worked with and just a little bit of insight into how you did, you know, three weeks. I've heard you mention three weeks, six weeks, very, very short timeframes. Yeah. Um, can you give a little bit of insight into 
you know, what you do with them to get those results without giving away the well, secrets, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, the, the, the um, I, I mentioned that we, we, um, we do willingness to pay research, mm -hmm. which is um, a kind of market research, but in a very different way. Right. And, um, and we, we have measured, we have developed a whole, in that we do a whole series of, of open-ended questions where we ask our clients, or it's not our clients, we ask the, the people who, who, um, um, who we poll, and this is all uh, done online, of course, mm -hmm. uh, we ask them to equate value and price, right? So uh, <clears throat> what, what, <clears throat> how they value different price points and, 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 um, and what, what prices are too, um, too cheap and too expensive and so forth, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and then we feed that into, um, into that um, uh, AI software that we developed that yeah. some gurus said we should call it quicker growth software. But I think that's hokey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, 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 but then I have business people that look at the data that comes out. Yep. and and make human sense out of it mm. right um because we we need to be very very specific in in our um in our recommendations you know but from from a um uh, from a from a company point of view it is um you know we take four man hours you know to do do one of these projects yep and and maybe six on the outside but uh and this is spread over several people over 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 some time you know mm -hmm. and 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 then if if it's just as simple as as just adjusting prices as the two examples i gave you then um then um then then it's just changing the price on on, on a website or in a price list that doesn't take any effort at all Interesting, though, I, I actually, I don't know if you know Dr. Rob Adams, who's over in the US, he, he's a specialist in market validation, I actually trained under him, and we do a lot of market validation work, and it's not as simple as asking people what they're prepared to pay, is it, because no, they no, no, often no, no. tell you, you something never, completely different. <laughs> you can never ask what somebody is, is willing to pay, because they yeah. will die. Yeah, you know? they do. They, they, they make it up, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Just the, the same thing as you cannot, um, you cannot... Uh, ask people what do you intend to do because mm, yeah. you never they they, they, don't they will just make it up mm -hmm. right but you can reliably say what have you done in the past because people will continue to do the same thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know and uh, you know i i think it's funny i i see these um uh, surveys some sometimes you know and, and you know like when when you go to some of these trade shows they say what are you going to buy next year? I just fill in something, you know. It's just, <laughs> yeah. and then they use this um, to to, uh, and then it's eighty six percent of yeah. attendees say they're going to buy X, yeah. you know. So as they use it as data to prove their <laughs> their model. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. Now, it was fascinating. I mean, I must admit. Um, people always sort of think they can do this kind of work themselves but it's a very very specialist skill i mean market mm. validation pricing validation I mean, you have to be able to ask the right sort of questions otherwise oh, yeah. you're actually just going to get answers that you want to get but they may not be the right answers that's true um but the the um you also um i mean there, there there's <laughs> tell you a story here um the the uh um, I had a conversation with the CEO of a, a SaaS company. They do something called a um, contract management software, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, this guy said, um, I've decided, he said, um, price is going to be $165 a month per user. And then he continues saying, um, but I don't know if that's right. Maybe it should be 99. Maybe it should have been 250. But 165 just felt right. It felt good. How much money is he leaving on the leaving on the table? You know, yeah. massive amount of money. Yes, right. Just because he 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 said, "Well, feel good pricing is right for me." Yeah. But it comes down to what value does that software actually provide, and how much exactly um, yeah, yeah. do people place on it? Yeah, yeah, correct. And mm -hmm. and and um, 
and the and and that's a perception of value. There's another interesting thing um, if um, in 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 you know, in, in the little price community, if you like, there's something called economic value pricing. Mm -hmm. This is um, um, something that you, you do when you're selling B2B. The seller is supposed to understand uh, the, the exact economic value that you provide to the buyer, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that requires the buyer to open up the kimono and tell everything to the seller, right? And then there's a lot of assumptions that you also have to make. And I and and again within that pricing community, this um, economic value pricing is the is the is the silver bullet to pricing, right? Mm -hmm. And I mentioned this to um, a bunch of CEOs that I know and said, uh, and I asked them, would you just open up and say tell the buyer everything there is to to about your company? And they, the, obviously the answer is never, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and that let's say in the very unlikely event that that will happen. So, okay, you have the economic value, then um, what portion of that should the seller take? 5%, 10%, 50%? Guessing again, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. So tell me a little bit about your book, because I'm, I'm very interested in the AI stuff, but I'm also interested to hear about this new book that you have just written. So this is obviously based on, I'm guessing, on all your experiences over the years. Yeah. And um, it, tell me a little bit about it. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's called The Price Whisper. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, it's called The Price Whisper, and it has a subtitle called A Holistic Approach to Pricing Power. Mm -hmm. And um, it's... It, the 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 AI piece is is really something that that is is used in the back office, you know. Yeah. Um, but it 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 talks in detail about everything there is about um, understanding that holistic approach, the understanding something called the decision landscape, that that is 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 really how we people make decisions. Uh, and specifically buying decisions. Um, there is a, there is a, uh, actually a, 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 an ac academic field called behavioral economics. So we are, we are leaning ourselves on three Nobel Prize winners. And, um, and, and to be honest, I define this uh, process that we're using uh, then 15 years ago when, when it was time to set out on my own. I only learned about behavioral economics five years ago. And, and then I realized that what we are doing is the, is the practical implementation of behavioral economics, right? I mean, for example, um, we talked about underpricing ourselves. Um, what has been proven again and again is that a five cent aspirin is not very effective curing your headache but a 50 cent aspirin is. <laughs> Same aspirin, right? <laughs> Same aspirin. <laughs> yeah. mm, you know? Yes. <laughs> or something called expectation bias. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, so and, and the book is really everything there is to know about pricing. Every, the, the, actually, not really everything, because I've just started on the second edition, because there are a few <laughs> things I, I want to add. Yeah. Um, but um, it's about the importance of, of understanding that um, uh, decision landscape. It reviews the uh, background in, in behavioral economics. It talks about the precise process you want to use to um, set, uh, set prices right and so forth. And it also have um, a few other things. You can learn things in your company by doing uh, stuff that... Um, um, that, that is related to your sales transactions and your processes. And I'm talking about that too. Okay. Um, but um, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's an Amazon bestseller. Yep. Um, and, and that's only the Kindle version um, that came out in, in early August. The, the print version is coming out in early November. Okay, great. So they can get it yeah. obviously from Amazon. That's where people can find the book. Yep, yep. they can. Yeah. So, um, 
so that's the um um and and i mean it's 300 odd pages yeah yeah okay so it's like a step step by step kind of guide into understanding behavioral economics and what effect that has on your pricing um yeah the the behavioral economics is, is sort of um the academic background and 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 then it's all about uh how do you implement that in so it's in a practical life. pragmatic that, version of it here yeah. that is what that is what we are about <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it hey i'm really interested i'm not sure if you can actually answer this or not but obviously for you to get these results for your clients you are um putting in place price increases what about the mm -hmm. communications around that because this is where oh. most people are fearful it's like oh my goodness if i write to my clients or talk to my clients and tell them the prices are going up by x um it's going to be disastrous no um there's fact uh, the, 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 there is a, I've written a guide called the seven easy steps to successfully uh, to successfully increase prices oh, with a subtitle um, and keep your customers happy. <laughs> Where do we find that? Right, is that it's, also it's, on, it's, on Amazon, is it? Sorry. Uh, it is on Amazon. Uh, it can also be downloaded from from our website for Excellent. free. Mm -hmm. But on Amazon, there is a price for it. Um, but um, and it's a quick read, you know, it's a guide. It takes 30 minutes to read or something like that. Sure. Um, but it, but you're right, it's all about it's it's all about external communication, internal communication. Mm. Um, and it's about having contingency plans, right? But um, but also often often it's not a big deal. Often you just increase prices and I mean we did a SaaS company uh, in the oil and gas field. And, and we said, you can increase your price with an average 41%. Um, they had uh, about 17,000 customers mm -hmm. and um, we helped them with the communication, how they should communicate this. We trained uh, their staff so that they would be prepared to defend prices should there be a uproar, you know? Gosh, yeah. um, and um, uh, because communication was done in a proper way when they increased their prices uh, the ceo got two angry emails and one angry phone call from and seventeen thousand customers <laughs> and they did not lose a single one wow <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so it is all i mean i think you're absolutely right it's all about the way that it is communicated and also your the internal stuff is very very important isn't it because oh yeah people have to understand that they're that we're yeah. we're worth the value that we are charging correct hmm. correct and that's the that's why um, what we um that's why is doing this willingness to pay research so you have the hard data hmm. on what what customers to a company are actually willing to pay yeah is so important and give you another story here a um, friend of mine has a uh, i don't know if you have that in in new zealand but here we have little pouches with ready-made drinks margaritas and stuff yes. like that yep and um and he he had a premium product uh, in that range of of um, of, um, uh, of of products you know and and um the first time he he sold to one of the large um chains here he sold at a loss <laughs> because his premium product was bundled sort of with the the cheap and nasty pouches that are out there you know um but then we got involved uh, and um we we could uh, measure what people are willing to pay for the premium features of this product mm -hmm. so next time when it was time to renew the order um bob came with hard data saying that this is what consumers are willing to pay for this product right yeah. so in the end he got the price that he wanted um the uh the grocery store chain um had a higher price product and therefore made a larger dollar, dollar margin mm -hmm. so it was more profitable for them yep. and consumers actually got the product they wanted had they had 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 this had he not had this data that we provided him with, he would have he would have withdrawn. He would have gone somewhere else. And we, this was a startup company, so he may just have closed it down. Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win-win. Mm -hmm. Everybody wins. 
absolutely love it. Okay, well, we could talk about this for hours, I have no doubt. And I'm definitely actually going to go out and get both of those books as they sound um, they sound fantastic. I think they're very helpful for my Thank class you. as well. But I'd love to know um, three practical kind of tips or tools that you could share with the listeners that they can put into place in their business. Well, um, if you, if you, well, first of all, um, and I, um, I mean, increase your price. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just go and increase your price, and 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 um, and have contingency plans. And if somebody um, if somebody complains, you know, grandfather them in, and then that's it. You know, mm -hmm. um, and and this goes. There's a famed VC called um, Andreasen, um, and um, and he he was asked that same question. You know, what is what is your most important advice to startups and he said increase your price because that's when you need the money the most right yeah. um second is um if you're a small company um you, you it's not really feasible to do the kind of work that that that, that we do you know yeah. um the the but the, even if you're a solopreneur you know there there's ways you can uh, figure out the right range of your price, right? Mm -hmm. And it's about value and price. And we talked about things can be too expensive. They can obviously also be too too um, too too um, too expensive. Um, but you can. This is what somebody can do. Again, a coach, a, a solopreneur, a startup, whatever, is find twenty five potential customers. These are not your current prospects, and it's certainly not your current customers, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, approach them with two questions. Yeah. And you need to find 25 of them. I said that, I guess. Yeah. Um, and the questions are, first, you describe the product or service. Yep. And then you ask them, now when you know what we do, the product or service, what is the price that is so low you think that um we are not going to deliver on our promise so therefore you won't buy it All right yeah and then you ask them and the flip side that if we will over deliver on our promise and the quality will be better than you think what is the price that is so high that is still out of out of out of uh, consideration when you talk to 25 people, yep. you take these um, the average of the price points that you got, you have the range of where your price should be. Mm, nice. Yep. Not below that and not over that. Yep. Right. Okay. And then if you, of course, want to put the price towards the higher end because that's where you're going to have the higher profitability. Understand. So most of our listeners are slightly larger in terms of they are uh, yeah, they're mid-sized they're not they're not the large u.s companies that, that you tend to work with but um mm -hmm. what would you recommend for those companies well um if i blatantly is to hire me <laughs> absolutely <laughs> why wouldn't you if you can yeah. add what was it you can take it from 200 million to 200 million in three weeks and yeah. why would you not yes <laughs> yeah. well uh, i mean for your audience in new zealand we have we have done some uh, we've done work for a few um well-known uh, New Zealand-based companies, so yes. I can't mention any names here. But no, no. Um, yeah, but we've, we've um, talked about it beforehand, so I know who they are. But yeah, yeah. Um, and that's great because you obviously your your organisation is actually global, isn't it? So you've got people around oh, yeah, the world yeah, who yeah. can work with anybody around the world. Yeah, we <laughs> we just finished off a um, a project for an Israeli company where we did the 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 actual willingness to pay, pay research in in South America, Africa, and Asia. Nice. So, yeah, we, we're all over the place. Fantastic. Okay, so what is your ideal client? What do, what do you, um, yeah, the, you like to do? The, yeah, they are, the, most of our clients are sort of in the, I would say, 5 to 10 to up to about 250 million. Yep. You know, that kind of range. Yes. Um, and the reason is that if, you, if you're a much bigger company, um, you typically call up the McKinsey's or Deloitte's of the world, you know, mm -hmm. 
and 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 uh, they often deliver a stack of paper half a meter high <laughs> and 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 i had more than one conversation that uh, with the ceo saying that i have a half a meter stack of paper that props up my door because i don't know what to do with it yep. <laughs> so so and uh, and we we are bringing we are almost always brought in when there's a change in the company sure. um when and and when there's maybe a new investor when maybe there is a acquisition of some kind and and there is a sense that it's time to move the company to the next level mm -hmm. you know yeah um we can't soldier on as we've done we need to we need to really grow spectacularly for 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 uh, shareholder value for you know to give more value to our clients to hire more people and all sustainability you know. yeah oh, fair enough great hey well look um really really helpful this information you shared here just to recap so we've got um i've got a couple of books you recommend people first of all the price whisperer which is yep. on the amazon bestseller list on kindle and about to release the book in early november then you've got your seven easy steps to increase the, prices increase prices and that was and, uh, and, and keep, keep your customers, customers happy, customers happy yep. yeah <laughs> so those two books definitely recommend and if people wanted to get in contact with you how would they find you and what's the website oh. Yeah, the, the the best way of finding me uh, is just do a Google search on the Price Whisper, yeah. and um, I'm, I I have a uh, I have a YouTube channel. There there are all sorts of guides and all sorts of uh, information. There's a masterclass in pricing on the website, um, and uh, you find all of that by just Google uh, the Price Whisper. Price Whisper, love it. Yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Well, look, thank you so much for your time. Uh, really appreciate you sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. Um, and I'm looking forward to reading both of those books. All right. Thank you so much, Deborah. And thanks. Uh, I hope the audience find it um, interesting and, and valuable as well. I have absolutely no doubt they will. Enjoy right. the rest of your afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you.